mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Overseer Aurelia Jamont and I'm the pastor of Nazareth Christian Fellowship. We're so delighted that you could join us this morning during our worship and we're just grateful to God for these times of online worship. God has been good to us and for this we want to give him praise. This morning right where you are Begin to worship God. Give him thanks for the things that he has done. God woke you up this morning, and that is so much to say thank you for. I pray that as you hear the word of the Lord that will come forth today, that you will be blessed and that you will be strengthened. This is now a time to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So may the Lord bless you 
to all our friends, to all our family, to those of you that are tuning in for the first time. We're so delighted to see you. May the Lord bless you. Join us for today's message, A Divine Strategy, taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 2. Bless the name of the Lord. It is good to stand behind the sacred desk this morning, and I give honor to the Spirit of God who is present here with me. Welcome to Nazareth Christian Fellowship. There is a word from the Lord. And I'd like you to take your Bibles this morning and join me. I'm going to be reading from the book of Joshua, the second chapter. And I would like for you to join me if you can. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles, get your Bibles and read. I'm going to be reading several verses uh, in Joshua, the second chapter. And so as I read the word of the Lord, amen, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Joshua, the second chapter, verse 1. Then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Acacia Grove. He instructed them, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. Follow me down to the ninth verse. I know the Lord has given you this land. She told them, we're all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when they left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live, along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. We offer our lives as a guarantee for your safety. The men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. Verse 20. If you betray us, however, we are not bound by this oath in any way. I accept your terms, she replied. And when she sent them on their way, leaving the scarlet rope hanging from the window, the spies went up into the hill country and stayed there three days. The men who were chasing them searched everywhere along the road, but they finally returned without success. Then the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua all that had happened to them. The Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. Thus far, the scripture. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word that will go forth this morning. I pray, God, that even as the people who are watching, that they will be blessed and that they would receive from you. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would just cause them to hear, thus saith the Lord. Give me clarity of speech and freedom of expression as this word goes forth. And we thank you for what you're going to do today. And we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 
Once again, my name is Pastor Aurelia Jamont. To those of you who are just tuning in, and I want to say that the topic of this word that the Lord has given me for today is a divine strategy. If you read your Bibles, you will see in Numbers 13 and 14 that God told Moses to send out 12 spies. One representative from each tribe was sent out. The men that were selected were all leaders for their tribes. The Bible goes on to name every one of the men involved. And if you recall, Caleb, the son of Jephna, and Joshua, the son of Nun, were named among that number. But what is interesting in from then to now is that in this chapter, Joshua, who is now the commanding officer, learned a lesson from his past experience. How many of us have learned lessons from things that we experienced in the past? Never mind what happened, but what did you learn from it? We are to learn from past experience. Experience is not what happens to a man. It is what a man does with what happens to him. The lesson was that this time we won't and we must not make the same mistakes. We will do it with less and will be it will be quietly done. That way the people will not be alarmed or discouraged by the report. I want you to say to yourself in this season, more with less. You don't need a whole lot of folk around you. You see, in this season, you don't need everybody around you telling you what you need to do and helping you to spy out the land. We just need a few people who are shakers and movers, and we will get there. You will get there with less people than you did in the past. We don't need a whole lot of people to be seen either. We just need some folk who can carry out the plan and help us to get it done. I want to tell you this morning that God has told you to do something. And when God tells you to do something, you can't share it with everybody. Because God gave you the strategy and because God gave you that plan, there's some things that you don't tell. And some of us tell it in our excitement too much or we tell our business. Sometimes we tell our business because we're looking for other people to sanction it or other people to agree with us. But then there may be some people around you that you shouldn't and you cannot share information with. Why? Because some people don't need to know. Some people can't handle what God has given you to do. Some people are also on a need to know basis. They don't need to know. Understand that you, can all, you cannot always share information or tell what God has told you because you will encounter challenges. And some of the challenges that you encounter might be discouraging to others. Yes, you can get discouraged too. But at the same time, because God spoke to you, he will continue to speak to you and be with you and carry you through. Some of the challenges and some of the things that God has assigned for you to do, they may sound too great, and the giants will look like they cannot be defeated. And I don't know if you have giants in your life or if you are encountering giants, because giants will always be there. And giants have a tendency to make us look small. And like David, sometimes we're laughed at, because they said to J David, 
the giant was too big. They said Goliath, listen, not only did they say it, but you could look at Goliath and see that it was bigger than him. And some of the dreams, some of the visions, some of the things that God has spoken to you, they might seem too big, but I'm here to tell you this morning that God told David, all you need is five smooth stones. <laughs> five smooth stones to knock out that giant. And even when Saul tried to put his armor on David, what happened? God said, uh-uh, uh-uh, David, not what everyone else says. People will always try to fix you in a mold and tell you what you need to do. But you need to understand this morning, it's not what they say, but it's what God told you. So somebody, hold on to your seat this morning because this is going to bless you. Listen, Saul tried to put his armor on David, but it didn't fit him. Listen, don't let people box you in. Don't let them try to fit you where you don't belong. God has already designed the, what he has for you. Some people will discourage you from pursuing the plan of God for your life. So understand that the less information you give about the strategy, the warfare strategy that God has given you is you're better off by not giving it out. There are people who should be, again, on a need to know basis. And I'm going to remind you, they don't need to know. Even your closest friends, even your family members. Listen, God has given you the plan. And if David had listened to the people, he would have never defeated Goliath. If you keep listening to people, you won't defeat your Goliath. All you need is the five smooth stones of what God has told you to do. David said, is there not a cause? The Lord had delivered him from the hand of the lion and the hand of the bear. And that God that delivered him previously, let me tell you, let me tell you, God did it before in your life. You have proved God before where he has brought you out of places that you got in and you didn't know you could get out. And the same God that delivered you before, that same God this morning will deliver you again. Listen, listen, the God I serve, David said, he knew that the same God, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel. Listen, whom thou hast defiled, this day the Lord will deliver thee into my hand. And this day, if you believe God, if you trust what he has given to you, he will deliver the enemy. He will deliver what it is you're facing into your hand. I want to tell you this morning that not everybody needs to be in the birthing room with you. They just need to be there after you have given birth just to be able to say congratulations. They need to be there after that baby is born. You see, because there's a time of labor. And during that time of labor, sometimes you're disfigured, you're exposed, all kinds of things happen, but you're on your way to giving birth. God has given you a strategy. God has told you what to do. You are on your way and you've got to get there. Listen, people will discourage you, but whatever God has spoken to you in this season. You don't need everybody around you offering you advice. God has already told you and given you the strategy. You have to carry out the mission and the victory will be the outcome if you follow God's instructions. Within three days, the armies of Israel were to cross the Jordan and begin their military conquest of the promised land. Joshua needed a strategy and a plan of attack. You need a strategy. You need to write out the vision. You need to write out the plan. When you've been given an assignment, a plan or a strategy is needed in order for you to execute that assignment or that vision. You've got to have a plan. 
God speaks to you, but you've got to sit down, write it down, write out the plan. You've got to strategize. You've got to say, you're with me, you're against me. We're going here, we're going there. You've got to follow through with the plan that God has given to you. This applies to us in our corporate and personal lives. You need to do the research. You need to do the homework. Joshua did the research. Joshua did the homework. You see, Joshua sent in the spies to get information of the fortress he was about to conquer. And notice I said conquer. There's something that God has told you to do, and he's already told you it's yours. So you've got to get information. You've got, listen, we've got the internet. And whatever it is God told you to do, you can do the research. You can look it up. You can see the size. You can see how many people are doing the same thing, who are not, what's needed, where it's not needed. Joshua went into the city of palm trees. He needed information on the size of the city, how many people were living in the city, where the gates are, where the army was, where the people hung out. He just knew that he had to get the demographics of this area before he even tried to conquer the land. Have you done your research? Listen, he sent out his spies, just two, just two. Sometimes all you need is just two. Okay, and he sent out two of his spies, two of his trusted. Notice I said trusted. And that's a lesson learned from the last experience. You can't trust everybody. Not everybody that is with you is for you. So you've got to learn, okay? So what did I learn? Everybody around you ain't with you. Just two spies, that's all he sent. And these spies uh, didn't even have a name. If you read the scriptures, they were not named. In the previous text, in, in, in Numbers, every leader was named for every tribe. But when Joshua, when Joshua sent out his spies, you didn't even know who these men were. And see, that's another thing. They were incognito. Anytime you're on a spy mission, you don't have a personality. You, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for whoever, whether it's the government, whether it's God. It's not about you. It's about getting the mission accomplished. The spies, their job was to report to Joshua and to no one else. You've, under, you've got to understand that there's some things that you report to God and to no one else. When God gives the leader, when God gives the leader a strategy, when God gives the leader a strategy, our job is to stick to our assignment so the rest of the plan can fall into place. When you follow God's plan, things will fall into place. It might feel and it might look a little rough sometimes, but trust me, stick to the plan of God. God already has things in place. God will use People who you least expect. Of all the persons the spies had to encounter was a bad girl named Rahab. Rahab was a working girl. She was a prostitute. And in today's common vernacular, Rahab was a thought, a hope. Why did God choose a woman whose last name excuse me, was hope. Why Rahab the hope? We don't know, but we know that God orchestrated the meeting. You see, one of the things that you've got to understand is that Rahab was a person of influence and God will use people of influence just to get you where you need to go. God will give you favor with some people that you don't think he would just because he's already set his plan of purpose in place. I'm sure these men looked at each other and thought to themselves, we're here on assignment. Because I'm sure if Rahab was Rahab. Mm, you know, a man is a man is a man. But the Lord, they understood that they were on God's time and they were there for God's business and not for pleasure. And what God has for you to do, it's not only for you to do it for yourself, but it's to be a blessing 
to many in the kingdom and many in ministry. They were on a mission for God and you are on a mission for God. Understand that this meeting was orchestrated by God. Joshua was strong. Joshua was courageous. Joshua was obedient. He was told this, be strong and courageous when he was first put in place after Moses' death. Why? Because he was a warrior and God knew what he had to face. You see, Moses didn't get to finish his assignment. So Joshua had to be the one to take up where Moses left off and go after the promise that God had promised the people of Israel. And God, he is faithful to his children. His word will never fail. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Had he not promised it to you, watch God work in the season. You might think, oh, we're in a pandemic and the world has stopped. But let me just tell you this morning that God slows things down just for you, just to get your attention, just for you to get caught up with some things that you put on the back burner, just for some dreams that you had that you didn't fulfill. God is saying, now is the time for the divine strategies that I'm giving you. Write it down. Spend time in my presence. Do what I tell you and watch me work in the long run. Listen, you may not see it now, but victory is at the end. God has a divine strategy just for you. Understand this, God told Joshua, go after what God said is yours. God told Joshua, take it by force. You've got to take what is yours by force. God has set some people in place, people with influence, people with ability, and people with power to help you. God is willing to help you. God downright early has set things in place and they are waiting on you to make that move to help you. But you've got to first do your homework, spy out the land and do the research. Get ready, get ready, get ready. As Bishop would say, there's some people waiting to help you pursue the plan that God has given to you. God has given you a divine strategy. If we go after it, they are already in place waiting to help. If God has told you he has given past tense it to you, don't sit and wait for it to come to you. You're wasting enough time. And as my husband would say, get up off your assets and go get it. Listen, when God gives you a green light, why are you sitting at the light waiting for it to change? Right now, God has given you a green light. The traffic light is green. The doors are swinging open. Things are happening in your favor. Even when it seems like the rest of the world is falling apart, God is setting his economy up for his children. The wealth is being transferred to the church. Now is the time to pursue those things that God has spoken to you. When people begin to hear of what God is doing amongst us, the people of God, they will go out of their way because of his mighty move in favor. I'm telling you, there's a season of favor coming in our midst even now. Whether it is for business, whether it is for education, whether it is for organization, listen, that business that you've been trying to launch, that company that you want, it's time to go forward. God has given you a strategy. This pandemic is just the time for you to slow down and hear him. You see, before you were too busy, you was listening to everybody, yes. But now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day to hear what God has for you. And what God has for you, it's for you. Listen, pray and hear from the Lord our God. The city of Jericho, I want to tell you, the city of Jericho was a city with high walls and they were high on alert because the camp of Israel was opposite to them and they were 
of the other side of the Jordan. There were gates to the city, so the spies were seen when they entered the city. Mind you, they were always on the lookout. And I want you to remember this. The enemy is always on the lookout. Even when you're sleeping, the enemy is on the lookout. Children of God, when you're on the wall, you don't come down. Why? The enemy is always on the lookout. But even though the men were disguised, the people in the city, and this is key, the people in the city were on high alert. As we say in the city, if you see something, say something. And they were looking out to see what was being left or what was moving or what was being said. There was chatter in the ear. I want to remind you, God, in the midst of all this, used a woman we wouldn't even look at. Rahab, though, she was a streetwise and cunning woman. Her house was right at the gate of the city. She recognized that there was something different about these men and hid them. You see, I told you before, God has people in place. God has people there to help you. She was the woman on the job and she was the woman for the job. When the king's messenger asked her about the spies, what did this woman say? She was smart. She was street smart. One thing about people who are street smart, they know just how to get over. Listen, she admitted they were there. She didn't deny it. She never said no. She didn't see them. But she also said that they had left at dusk, just about the time that the city gate is closed. So what did she do? She discouraged them from going after the men because just about dusk, she said they left. And they accepted that fact. And listen, listen, listen. At just about that time, the city gate had closed. And some people may say she lied, but she was cunning. Enough to say they hadn't left, which they did. They weren't in her room. So even if they went to check her house, they were not there. But mind you, they were on the rooftop. Once the king messengers, once they were gone, Rahab went up to the roof to talk to the two men in the darkness. I want to tell you that God had dealt with Rahab's heart. And one of the things and one of the points that I want to bring out. First, she disclosed that she believed that the Lord, the God of Israel, had given them the land. God had given them the land of Canaan. And through the army of Israel had, had not yet crossed the Jordan. And though the army of Israel had not yet crossed the Jordan River, Rahab stated in effect that the conquest is good as over. And here it is. She is telling them, you already have the victory, so I might as well help you. And God will put people that will see that his word is with you, his word is in you, and his promises are on you. His anointing is on you to get that job done. His power and his favor are on you to get that assignment, that task, as magnanimous as it might seem, you can do it. God has destined you to do it. Well, Rahab accepts God as being the only God, the only Savior. She, her first step was from her former lifestyle, is that she forsake sin and turns to God. She took a step to salvation. And this is how your influence, when you begin to obey God, you don't know how many people will turn to God because of your obedience. Mind you, he set them there. But because you obey God and God set those people there, something that you will do and something that they will know and understand and believe, they'll see God working inside of you. Well, second, she revealed to the spies the priceless information that she had. 
the inhabitants of Jacob as well as the rest of Canaan was demoralized. You see, they lived in the country and they lived in fear. Why? Because they had heard of them. They had heard of what God had done for them. A heart sank and everyone's courage failed. She gave away the fact that they were vulnerable because of fear. When fear grips you, you become stagnant. You don't move. You're frozen. You ever been in fear and all you can do is just stand there and not move? This is what fear does to you. That's why as believers, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. But what I tell you is that when fear grips the enemy or fear grips our enemy, God will even bring confusion that they don't even know. Listen, in 2 Chronicles, in the book of Chronicles, God caused confusion amongst the enemy and God will bring confusion in the enemy's camp because they are so fearful of him. And this is how God had it done. And he said he would do it. If you look at Exodus 23 and 27 and Deuteronomy 2 and 25, listen, you'll see how God gave them a promise that he was going to bring it to pass. Since a major objective of the spy mission was to assess the moral of the, the morale of the enemy, God will bring confusion in the enemy's camp. This word was indeed music to their ears. And understand that they feared what God could do. Why terror, pastor? Because of the power of our God. Our God will cause our enemies to come to our knees. He will make your enemies at your footstool. He will bring them to their knees before you. You don't have to fight in the battle. God will fight for you. They had heard, and how many people know that you serve the true and living God? How many people know about the God of Israel and how he had brought them out of Egypt, delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh and brought them over the Red Sea? God delivered his people many times. God delivered you many times and God keeps delivering you from the hand of the enemy. Whether you believe it or not, my soul escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. And how many times have you not escaped the hand of the enemy? It was God. It wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't an accident, but it was God. God covered you. Listen, God delivered his people many times in the past. And God will continue to deliver his people. God will continue to deliver you. Israel was feared and people will fear you because of Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He is a mighty deliverer. He's a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you may ask or think. Why are you frightened? Why are you downcast, my soul? God has given you a strategy and watch God work it out. He did it before and he will do it again. Come and see the works of God who is awesome in his power. Now that same God was closing in on them and they knew it. They knew that they could not win. But greater than that, we had a woman who believed it. She had faith. First, you must believe that God is. And you've got to believe today. I don't know where you're at right now, but you've got to get up from where you are. Dumped off yourself. And my God, without faith, it's impossible to, 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 to please God. You must first believe that he is. Rahab then did something very unusual and very unexpected. She declared her faith in Israel God. For the Lord, your God, is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Responding to the word she had received about the mighty working of God, Rahab believed, trusting in his power and mercy, and that faith served her. But how could Rahab have such a remarkable faith and still be a harlot and go telling lies, the answer would seem to be that as she responded in belief to the message she heard about God's work, she later responded to further messages concerning God's standards of life and obeyed. 
This morning, I want to say, friends, this morning, I want to say, Nazareth, we are declaring that in this season, we're going to see the great things the Lord is doing. Nazareth, people will hear about God moving on our behalf and will come to know him. Listen, you've got to be a witness. You've got to use the strategy that God has given you. You've got to believe God. You've got to trust God. Sometimes it's in the still small voice. You've got to hear God when he speaks. You've got to obey him. It's time for obedience. It's time to do, thus said the Lord. Even in all that we have gone through, listen, even with the loss of our pastor, the loss of our bishop, church, it ain't over. I'm here to tell you it ain't over until God says it's over. Some of you are still weeping. Some of you are still crying, but I'm telling you, God made some promises a long time ago, and I've decided this morning to make Jesus my choice. I've decided this morning that come what may, I'm going to serve him. My God, though the earth may crumble, though mountains may move, I've made a decision to make Jesus my choice, and I've made it my choice this morning. So never mind what you're going through. Mind that God has made you a promise, and you're going live and see the promises of God come forth in your life. Listen, listen, listen. We are moving forward. Church, we're moving forward. It's time to go forth. It's time to move forward. God is not a man that he lies. He ain't telling you something he ain't gonna do. You better hold him to it. That's what I do. I tell God all the time, God, you say, and God knows that he has the kind of child that God, you don't make me promises you ain't gonna keep. Listen, when I was a child, don't make me promises. I still don't make promises to people. And that's why when you call my phone, I says, maybe I'll get back to you. But I am the type of person, don't make me a promise you ain't going to keep because I'm going to hold you to it. And God knows that I'm going to hold him to his word. And I stand on his word. And I put pressure on his word. And I believe him for what? He will do. Lord, your will be done. You know the greater plan. You know the greater picture. Listen, Rahab was a businesswoman. She knew how to take care of her business. She knew how to sit at the table and negotiate. She had a family and she looked out for her family's safety and for her own. She had to put a long-term plan in place. And I'm here to tell you, you've got to put a long-term plan in place so that your family, so that you can live even in the season of pandemic and after this. She was concerned for her family's security. She was concerned for what would happen to her family. She was a smart woman. And she made a deal between herself and the spies. She asked for kindness, not much. Spare our lives. She used the Hebrew word hes, which means loyal, steadfast, or faithful. Love based on a promise, agreement, or covenant. She knew how to handle her business. I'm here this morning to tell you, handle your business. No disrespect, men, but this is the year of the woman. You got to know how to negotiate. And I'm telling you, God, I'm learning and I know how to negotiate. Today we call it favor. God will set people in your path to be kind to you. Why? Because you serve him and you are in covenant. Understand, you are in covenant with God. God is loyal to his people when you walk according to his word. God says he will do. He does his part. Now do your part. Favor says, I will do it for you even when you don't deserve it. I will do it for you. The response of the spies was immediate and decisive. When Rahab sat down and she began to negotiate and she said, I'll do this. You see, when God gives when the Lord gives us the land that is Jericho, we will keep the agreement. If you don't report our mission, we will protect you and your family or lose our own lives. In the middle of conducting business, she was saved. Understand that while you sit at the table, people can be saved. While you're doing your business, handling 
whatever negotiations of things that the Lord has told you to do, people will get saved. Joshua was determined. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And some people will come to know the Lord because of you. When we look at Joshua 2, verses 15 to 20, we see that as the spies prepared to go, again, they confirmed the pact by repeating and enlarging the conditions Rahab must abide by. First, her house must be marked by a scarlet cord hung from the window. Because of the position of the house on the city wall, the cord will be clearly seen by the Israelite soldiers again and again as they would march around the walls. Her home would be clearly marked out and no soldier would dare violate the oath and kill anyone in that house. Second, Rahab and her family were to remain in the house during the attack on Jericho. If anybody understand obedience, listen, listen in this pandemic, I got to interject. Put on a mask, wash your hands, don't go anywhere you don't have to go. If anybody would wander out and was killed, the guilt for his death would be his own, not the invaders. Finally, the spies again emphasized that they would be free of his oath, of this oath of protection if Rahab exposed their mission. Keep your mouth shut. To these conditions, Rahab agreed, and after the spies left, she tied the scarlet cord in the window. She probably also hurried and told her family, gather yourselves together in this house. Come on, let's scurry in. The door of her house was a door to safety from the judgment soon to fall on Jericho. Let your house be a house of safety. Understand that in the season, you need to be under the blood. She was covered by the blood. For the Bible says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Their mission was now completed. The spies and Rahab exchanged parting instructions concerning their escape. According to history, Jericho at this time was surrounded by two walls about 15 feet apart. Planks of wood spanned the gaps and then houses were built on this foundation, probably due to pressure of space in the small city. Rahab's house was one of those houses built on the wall. In this way, it was part of the city wall. The spies were carefully lowered by a rope through a window of Rahab's house. Their escape would have been more difficult, if not impossible. The spies hid in the hills for three days until the soldiers of Jericho gave up the hunt. Then under the cover of darkness, the spies swam back across the Jordan, made their way quickly to the camp at Shittim and reported to Joshua about their adventure and the alarm and the state of the Canaanites. They did what their assignment was. They went out, they spied, they negotiated and they came back and they reported to the person they had to report. Their conclusion was, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands for all the people are melting in fear. You hear me? The Lord has surely given you the land for all the people are melting in fear. You don't know how many people are afraid of you because you won't go forward. When you begin to step out of what God has said to you, those around you will know because of his presence with you, because of his power with you, that God is with you. How different from the report of the majority of the spies at Kadesh Barnea who said, we can't attack those people, they are stronger than we are. Those people all died in the wilderness. You cannot look back. You cannot look to the side. You can only say, God has purpose. I am going to be obedient 
and I'm going to do what he says. Yes, we can attack. Yes, you can take the land. Yes, you can have the promise that God has given to you. Yes, God has given you a design, a divine strategy. Yes, it will come to pass. Today, I decree and declare and charge you that you will not blow it this time. I want you to agree with me this morning. I will not blow this opportunity. I will not blow the instructions that God has given me. I will not blow it this time. I've learned my lesson from my past mistakes. And this time, I'm going to take the promise that God has made to me. This time, we're going to call it Operation Jericho. And the condition we experience, we will not experience it again. Understand that the walls are coming down. Those walls that have blocked you from crossing over, they're coming down this morning because you're obeying and you're standing in the authority and in the promise and in the word of the living God. Thus said the Lord, go forward, move according to my precepts, move according to my word and watch me, watch what I will do for you. God has downloaded you the information already. He has given you the exit strategy, the key to your success, the key to your victory in your life this morning. This time, this time, he's going to tell you how to get out of debt. This time, he's going to tell you how to help your family. This time, he's going to tell you how to build your business. This time, he's going to show you how you're going to be the head and not the tail. This time, he's going to help you not to live from paycheck to paycheck. When the world is falling apart, God is giving you a strategy to get out. It's a divine strategy to live on top of what we hear. And we're not moved by what we see, but we are moved by the fact that God has given us a promise. And as long as we obey him, as long as we do as his word says, watch what God will do. Listen, God is showing us how to be fruitful and have dominion. He put us here to have dominion. It belongs to God. The cattle on a thousand hills, it belongs to God. And this time, we have the divine strategy. I want to tell you once again, every wall in your life, every wall in our lives must corporately and individually come down. In the past, he gave you instructions. In the past, he gave instructions. I want to tell you that this is a new chapter. This is a new verse. You won't do it the way you did it before. But this time, you'll do it the way God says. This time, verse by verse. This time, the way God told you. And if you do it, you will live. If you do it, you will prosper. It's time. It's time, my friend. It's time, my brother and sister. It's time, church, for us to move forward. We've got the green light, and we have got to go. When God speaks, listen. Watch what God will do for you. He has given you the land. God has given you the city. Take it. I pray that this word has blessed you this morning. I pray that you receive from the Lord. God has given you a strategy. God has spoken to you many times. Sometimes we dismissed it because we think, oh, it's not God. But I'm here to tell you this morning that this time, what God has whispered in your heart, step out by faith and obey him. And you'll see his promises come to pass. If you don't know this God that I'm speaking of, if you never said yes to Jesus Christ, the one who died, who was buried, and resurrected, and is coming back again, I want to give you the opportunity to get to know him. All he says is that you have to accept 
Rahab, as she sat at the table, she acknowledged God. You just have to accept the fact that he is God. Believe in your heart and confess into your mouth that he is your Lord and that he is Savior. And invite him into your heart. Have a relationship with God and watch him do great things for you. If you need prayer, you've heard this word. Right where you are, Father, we thank you for the person under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that they would hear, that they would hear from you. And God, all the confusion in their mind, all the things that they're struggling with, I pray that you would cause them to be at peace. Lord, I pray that you would touch their spirit, man. And I pray, oh God, that they would rest in the fact that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning because they will trust you. And they will walk confidently in your promises. And we thank you again. If this word has blessed you, I want you to just write us. Send us an email. And also, while you're at it, give. Be a blessing. Sow a seed this morning. This word has changed your life. You want to see God do some great things. Why don't you sow a seed? Sow a seed of at least $25, $50. Sow a seed as God has led it on your heart. And watch God do that thing for you, even in the midst of all that we're going through. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. May you have a blessed week. May his grace continue to abound in your life. And may the blood of Jesus continue to cover you. God bless you. We pray that you were blessed by today's word. If you need prayer, you may call us at 855-536-6688 or send an email to prayer at ncfellowship.net. Here at Nazareth, we have several ways for you to give. Online at ncfellowship.net slash donate, cash app, our tags grow at NCF, Via our mobile app, search for Nazareth Christian Fellowship, and you may text to give to 718-215-9580. Be sure to visit our website at www.ncfellowship.net to stay informed of our current events. Once again, thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning worship experience here at Nazareth Christian Fellowship. Come see what great things the Lord is doing.